The Church of Rock. She's going to join us today to read from her book, uh, which is titled Reflection. And I do believe it's available in hardcover and softback now. The book came out originally August 20 of 18. Uh, the author is George Stimson. It's a great 480-page book. The yeah, the publisher is George Stimson, I should say. And I'm going to introduce my guest right now, and my guest is Red. Hey, Red, how's it going today? Good, thank you. I had a bad connection, but it's working now. And thank you for correcting me. Yeah, George is the publisher. You're the author. My bad. No, you're not bad. <laughs> Sometimes I am. <laughs> I make stupid uh, mistakes, but I try to correct them quickly. Um, thanks for making the time to be here. I'm excited to have you read from your book today. I know it was a challenge picking stuff to even you know read from the book because there's so much content. It's it's all about uh, the the development of the characters to me uh, because this is a really a love letter to friends. And they were so special to me that I took time in selecting the words that would describe their characters and uh, memories of things they did and so forth so that uh, somebody could kind of get to know them. I didn't, I didn't succeed in capturing c their complete uh essence or their they're just it was just uh i did the best i could with it because i'm not a trained writer well you did fabulous it's you know it's the medium is very challenging and the space that you're given so with what you were given i thought you painted a very beautiful portrait maybe not quite as accurate as you had wanted but man it's a real good read well you can, it's very hard to to capture anybody yeah in in on film or in words i noticed that uh whenever i watch biographies i'm never satisfied with the the portrayals even when the actors are doing a good job i like i saw the one with um fred, about fred hampton and i felt that i i didn't catch his essence in that movie because uh you can't it's a, it, charisma is something that's very difficult to imitate yeah you're right so you're right yeah. some things can't be put into words and just like some things are lost in translation via text messages same kind of you know concept but um yeah you're right about that i thought you did very well though did you keep a lot of notes through the years i know you had some that were originally like destroyed i believe no i i did i i had uh pages and pages of notes and then at some point because new rules came down in the prison i had to condense everything into as close to 25 pages as i could i had more than that but uh that's that was what we were told we could have yeah and and that was a huge challenge did it take because, you i'm sorry yeah go ahead did it take you a long time to write the book well once i got all the notes together and i got in a place when i got out i was able to sit down and put them all together and uh and use a computer not to mail anything i will i'm not allowed to be online but to um just to type it all out yeah amazing you know Very. i was handwriting everything and it works but it's really slow <laughs> that's the way i do everything i don't even own a computer it's all notebooks my house is full of notes everywhere so i can relate <laughs> yeah well one if you if you want to edit your work you know the computer is the way to go because you can just take out whole paragraphs and yeah. replace them and yeah it's yeah. so it made a big difference because i i remember sitting on the floor in, in the prison with pages all around me <laughs> and i would <laughs> i would try to um work them together and it, it was just a challenge that's all that's cool so 
I'm glad, anyway. I'm glad that the end result uh, is this fantastic book. Again, if you're just tuning in, uh, Reflection is the name of the book we're talking about. Uh, yeah, so that's a good one. From 67 to 69 is the focus. Uh, you'll hear about the Santa Susana Mountains and the outbacks of the Mojave Desert and the California's beaches and bluffs, um, also Beverly Hills and the Redwoods and Topanga Canyon, and of course, San Francisco's Haight Ashbury. And I think you have fo- said you were going to focus on some of the San Francisco writings today. Right. Uh, this is when I was 18, and or maybe even younger, and I first was coming into San Francisco. I first saw San Francisco from above. Not a skyscraper city, nor a web of threaded freeways, but an open-faced picnic city spread on stuffed green hills. Mm. Thick picnic sandwich houses and frosted gingerbread houses neatly stacked on the heaping hills. Downtown was a surreal, wavering chessboard of colorful blocks and specialty shops up and down steep slopes tracked by click clicking, ratchet catching, chug chugging, pull pulling, tug of war with gravity cable cars, bringing their arrival. And in the day distance, <clears throat> from the hills, you could see the chocolate factory on the wharf, the salt bay gleaming blue, the specks of colorful boats, and the deep orange, larger than I thought, Golden Gate Bridge. On foggy mornings, It was a sedate city of Victorian houses that had not yet opened their eyes. Long drift nets of mist still floating at their windows. But on clear mornings, crisp winds gusted scents to thrill your senses. I bet there wasn't a city in the world like it. Besides the open cable cars and the panoramic views from humongous hills, besides at least seven ethnically distinct neighborhoods natural to the city since the rest of the world came to Port Mission and Fort, with their garlic, fresh mint, olive oils, cayenne, curries, and soy sauces, besides the migratory flocks of long-necked tourists, in ice cream parlors and Red Dragon restaurants, and the remnants of non-conforming North Beach beatniks, followers of the finicky shifting centers of art and fashion, in their musty bookstores and galleries smelling of leather, linseed oil, paint, and clay. Besides all of that was the Haight-Ashbury District, a crossroad around which were gathered the new beat, new hip, less proud, less isolated young hipsters, the hippies, a whole new culture. This was uh, the excitement I had when we first came upon the city with this new culture, and it was so exciting. It just seeing what people were wearing signified to me uh, a a whole new world everything in the world was changing then and maybe it's always that way especially to young people beautiful wow that was great <laughs> i had my eyes closed and it was really lovely thank you Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, I wrote the book as much as I could from the mind of that time. And at times I became um, enthusiastic in a way that I rarely am now. So, uh, I think that it was part of being that age. And how cool it is to be at the beginning of your life and at uh, discovery, at the points of discovery. And I think that I would like to have that mindset again. And every once in a while, 
it happens. Mm. But uh, I, I've tend to become a little more uh, reserved due to uh, rules that I have on me and so forth. Do you find that with age comes more wisdom generally? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there are points of wisdom that come at all ages, I think. Yeah. In fact, I think that that babies, you know, have mm. have no buffers. They have no preconceptions, no buffers. I I have memories actually of being really young and recognizing the mood my father was in when he came home from work you know yeah. I, you, I could tell by the way the sound of the doorknob i could tell by certain signals just the way that he was walking you get vibrations and vibrations are a huge part of awareness that and whether awareness is what you call wisdom i i guess uh is debatable but um i just know that we do have that uh perception when we're babies and then as we grow up we learn to take on different personalities and yeah yeah seems like so babies have like haven't had that cord that psychic cord uh yet cut and they're still connected to like the whatever the other side <clears throat> might be and haven't yet been brainwashed or you know tricked or deceived into these belief systems and all these things so i believe the same about children you know babies uh what maybe up till about age three four you know two three mm -hmm. yeah uh, there's a big psychic awareness with children like that and it's really amazing because they'll be talking to other entities that we can't see and then we find out that they're still kind of connected there you know but um yeah do you have any other um parts of your book you could read today well um let's see i was reading about uh i was reading siddhartha back then nice and I, mean, I would recommend that book. I, I don't have it at the moment because because it's a great book to quote. Hmm. But um, yeah. I was raised Roman Catholic, and but the Buddhist practices of meditation and spiritual union with nature seemed more Christ-like to me than the rush of material production consumption that western life had become eastern belief and then i i describe in the book you know how many people in uh hate ashbury and in communities or of uh, everywhere i guess uh of younger people people were starting to have a a better sense of spirituality and about how we were rejecting anything that was called establishment and i that we felt we were becoming part of the new renaissance mm. and then uh, your neighborhood knows all about that so i don't have to read <laughs> anything about that ashland oregon boy yeah it's a it's got that vibe right but um then uh i i took out two books that i really would recommend we were reading back then we were reading the prophet by galil gabron and i don't know if you all have read that i have I'm not curious. read that i have not read that to be honest but i'm writing it down right now because i'm going to look for it so i thought i would read something from that lynn what is the last name of the author G I B R A N. Okay, thank you very much. You are listening to the Earth Heart Radio Show. We are speaking with Lynette Fromey, aka Red. Her book is Reflection, and she's reading uh, from the book today. And I'm very, very grateful. And uh, it's all yours, Red. This is this is from the Prophet by Khalil Gibran. Um, it's about a man who's considered a prophet who has spent a good deal of time in a city 
of old and he's about to depart on his ship and pe the cr a crowd gathers and they want to ask him questions and one of them says speak to us of love and he raised his head and looked upon the people and there fell a stillness upon them and with a great voice he said when love beckons to you follow him though his ways are hard and steep and when his wings enfold you yield to him though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you and when he speaks to you believe in him though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden for even as love crowns you so shall he crucify you even as he is for your growth so he is for your pruning even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun so shall he descend to your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth wow. like sheaves of corn he gathers you unto himself he threshes you to make you naked he sifts you to free you from your husks he grinds you to whiteness he needs you until you are pliant and then he assigns you to his sacred fire that you may become sacred bread for god's sacred feast all these things shall love do unto you that you may know the secrets of your heart and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart but if in your fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh but not all of your laughter and weep but not all of your tears love gives not but itself and takes not from itself love possesses not nor would it be possessed for love is sufficient unto love and when you love you should not say god is in my heart but rather i am in the heart of god and think not you that you can direct the course of love for love if it finds you worthy worthy directs your course love has no other desire but to fulfill, fulfill itself but if you love and must needs have desires let these be your desires to melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night to know the pain of too much tenderness to be wounded by your own understanding of love and to bleed willingly and joyfully to wake at dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving to rest at the noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy to return home at eventide with gratitude and then to sleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart and a song of praise upon your lips wow very awesome captivating stuff there lynn really amazing thanks it's a little it was a little long oh there's no a, not at all there's each topic that he brings up there contains wisdom this book was written in nine. well it was published in 1923 Okay, I'm writing these things down. Is there any other books you recommend? Besides Siddhartha and this one, it would be uh, No One is Too Small to Make a Difference by Greta Thunberg. Yes. Yes, uh, thank you to you, yourself, and Blue for getting me a copy of that book. Actually, Blue and George, I think, sent that my way. But that book was really uh, enlightening for me. That little girl, well, these were speeches. It's a very small book. And it contains speeches to various gatherings of people, sometimes parliaments, uh, in which she gives clear speech about the condition of the Earth's 
climate, the condition of the the uh, species, how she explains how we're losing many uh, hundreds, in some cases, species per day uh, due to so many different bad practices. And mm. because she says she's a, a she's on the um, autism spectrum, uh, if anybody has ever known any autistic children or known anyone who cared for them, uh, those people who are referred to as Asperger's are frequently um, tremendously intelligent. Yes, they are. And, and yet uh, Greta explains that she tends to see things in black and white. So when she was a little girl and learned about climate change and global warming and how it was affecting all the different species, she wondered how come nobody was talking about it? How come it wasn't on the news? Because what she learned, and she's very smart and learned when it comes to the details i think the details uh go over the heads of many of us yes she's definitely you know. a little angel and i i hope she continues to do what she does i know many people on the like you were talking about autism i've worked with several musicians that are that have autism and they're extremely talented folks and they do have drawbacks in their own personal demons but for the most part they live life very healthily and um you know they're extremely uh, creative people a lot of the time and greta is just a very intelligent young woman and uh i really hope she continues because she's well, just an excellent she, leader she represents the next generations yes <laughs> and and uh she, to me she represents what we were back in the day mm. and she just per my ears perked up my eyes lit up i i felt that life is still here on earth i felt like not all of us had fallen asleep that mm. We know that we have to make changes. She she is actually um, excited about making changes. She sees a positive way to do it, ways to do it. It represents creativity, and she's uh, not negative about it. I think a lot of people have turned it off because they don't know what to do, and they feel... But see, she says... She has no choice. This is her future. This is, uh, she's going to be around for a very long time. She's still in her teens. So I, I hope all young people and, uh, who want to live, you know, uh, perk up. Let us see you. We, uh, the older people have to be bumped out of the way if they won't change. And I don't mean that in, a, in a, any kind of a negative way. I just mean, I, I think our some of our leaders were affected by Greta. And I think that um, we will see some changes. There's going to be a struggle, though. There's so many people struggling, so many people arguing, fighting. And it's, uh, I guess that's the way they want to live. But... It doesn't do anything for me. I, I would like to see the kind of changes that even if we have to work a little harder or make some changes in our lives or give up things, how exciting is that if we get in exchange a world? That's what uh, Greta represents the earth heart to me. Ah, oh, that's so, beautiful. That's great. So that's why I wanted to mention her. Yeah, that's really wonderful. And, you know, Sister Tracy shares the same view that you do and often says something like, until the old regime and the old, you know, ways and the old folks that have been in the system for so long controlling it are just out of the picture, there won't be real change. But it's starting to happen finally with, you know, people like Greta and other people that are you know, looking out for the climate and the she, environment. She affected, she really deeply affected a lot of people. She told them she didn't want their hope. 
she didn't want them uh, to give excuses. She she wanted them to promise. She wanted them to do. Excuse me, to do something. Yeah. So uh, I'm very. I was happy to see her, and I. Uh, I would like to serve the coming generations. That's great. I would like to be in service to our world because, you know, Earth first. Nothing else deserves it more. It gives us life. So anyway, I'm sorry to take up all your time. No, no. It's been wonderful listening to your words of wisdom. And I was going to ask, I know that you, from what I hear, you've been kind of disciplined with your health, especially within these pandemic days of being inside a lot. Do you have any words of wisdom or any words at all, uh, however you want to word it, uh, on physical fitness or activities in nature or around the home that people can do that are maybe healthy? Well, the people... It, well, if you live in a climate where you can garden, that's one thing. And any kind of walking, I'm being inside, you learn how to use small spaces. One time I tried walking in every different way I could walk, with my feet splayed out, with my feet, uh, you know, uh, backwards. I walk. I learned to walk backwards, which is fun because <clears throat> your trust, you know, there's a, tremendous amount of trust yes so i've been doing uh push-ups with robert that's what I, I hear yeah uh, yeah so uh, what is your push-ups regime do you do like uh, three sets of 10 or how do you do what's your what do you do no we do 10 sets of 10 uh so we do 100 every other day wow 10 sets of 10 okay uh, I'm feeling like a big wimp right now, but I think I could try it. Try it. <laughs> well, you build, you build it, and yeah, that's kind out. of what's fun about it. You, I always start out uh, with a little, and then I increase daily, or at least in in ways that are beneficial, and they don't turn me off to it. So I'll start with five a day. 10 a day to you know and then and then pretty soon i'm strong enough to do more and like i'm doing the i'm doing straight push-ups now i started out doing push-ups from my knees so now i can do regular ones that's awesome yeah you're inspiring me i whenever i do talk to robert he's always giving me little bits of advice that are very helpful and um i need to increase my own discipline i will admit that on the radio but, uh, <laughs> yeah, the discipline is the, is the hard part. We're lazy. We're, we're used to having everything. Mm. We can't, you know, it's hard to imagine, but uh, if, you, if you imagine being a pioneer and not having <laughs> any of the amenities that we have, we've had <laughs> so much, and it's had that double edge. It's been both good and bad because it's made us a little fat and a little lazy <laughs> well the pioneers had yoga mats right <laughs> yoga mats I'm yes right 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 well sure they can but then again there's that element of uh progression as far as understandings of uh, what's necessary and what's beneficial to you and we've grown a lot in that yeah uh knowing how to move our bodies every day and how to i mean they didn't have time to do that stuff right do you, you have to spend oh go ahead no it's okay I'm, I'm i'm learning from everything you're saying especially about the fitness thing um what do you feel real quick um about forgiveness is it important to be a forgiving person or to try to have, have forgiveness oh yeah not to <laughs> not to carry around bags full of grudges it's it's just it is a, destructive yeah and it does hurt the person who's doing it so hmm. yeah i just wanted to ask you about that because i've been trying to work on that in my own life gratitude and forgiveness are the two things that i've been kind of working on i heard an interview with santana and it was great it was He's a very um, forgiving and grateful person. Yeah, he's so great. He's such a spiritual cat. I love that guy so much. Carlos Santana, what a legend. 
Well, I tell you, unless you have more you'd like to read out of your book, I won't keep you today anymore then, Red. I appreciate having you on the phone today. I I did want to read more, but I found it hard to select and pull it out of the context of the entire book. Right. Well, the San Francisco treat uh, was really awesome, and, you know, the color red is associated with Valentine's Day, so I thought it was a perfect day to ask you to be a guest, and by the way, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, and same to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. We're going to play a couple of songs that you have requested, and I do have them lined up. The first one is going to be Art Garfunkel, who I am a fan of, and it's a tune I have not heard. Uh, The song is called All I Know. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? No, but it reminds me of um, Pat, uh, a good friend of mine. Oh, awesome. Well, after that, we're going to do Aaron Neville and Linda Ronstant per your request as well. And uh, I appreciate you uh, reading from your book. If you're tuned in, you're listening to a chat uh, and a book reading, which was really fun, from Lynette Fromey, a.k.a. Red. The book is Reflection. You can get the book by going to goodbyehelterskelter.com. It's also available at... Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, and other book merchants. Um, again, uh, the publisher is George Stimson, uh, published in 2018. The book is Reflection and Red. Thanks a million for coming on today. Thank you. Yep, we'll be in touch.